Hi, my name is Art Adams, and I am the Cinema Lens Specialist at Airy in Burbank, California. And today I'm going to introduce you to our new line of impression filters for signature lenses. There's something we don't talk a lot about, and it's the fact that signature lenses were designed with the Alexa 35 in mind. They're very high performance lenses, they capture every stop of dynamic range, all the color, all the contrast, and all the resolution that that camera can handle. But because they're such high performance lenses, it means that they're exceptionally easy to push around. We can easily degrade them and deconstruct their look in a number of different ways. So the most obvious is this little magnetic holder that sits at the back of every signature lens. It's a net holder. Now, nets on the back of lenses is a very classic Hollywood look from the 1940s, 50s, 60s, and it was used to diffuse close-ups for actors and actresses. It's actually a very recognizable vintage look. And because we're basically a film company at heart, we decided we would bring this back and make it easy because you can stretch fabric over the back of this, use a number 12 rubber band, trim the edges, and then it goes right back into place. Tiffin is actually releasing a number of their most popular diffusion filters for the back of lenses. So I believe this includes filters like Glimmer Glass and Pearl. And that's really exciting because the look on the back of the lens is slightly different from the front of the lens. So it offers some interesting opportunities. But we started experimenting with optical elements. We went to an eyeglass lab and had some very simple diopters made in glass and plastic. And they had a really interesting three-dimensional look when attached to the back of a signature lens. Now, there were some side effects that weren't really acceptable. The focus rotation of the lens dropped to about 90 degrees. Not ideal. The focus scale was completely off. And while commercials and music videos were okay focusing by eye and making that work, features in TV were not so happy with that. Uh, they really wanted the scales to be accurate. So we came up with the impression line of filters, which are at their core, positive and negative diopters, but there is an additional formulation in these that actually preserves the focus scale on the lenses. So you get the look of a positive or negative diopter, but you don't lose focus rotation and all the marks on the lens are now accurate. These are very high precision optics and they are designed to work with our most recent cameras, which include the Alexa 35, the Mini LF, the full size LF and the Alexa 65. Now the positive filters do not require any shimming. It's easy enough to pop them right on the back of a signature lens and done. And you can switch between any of the four strengths on the fly. The negative strengths do require a shim, and it's a fairly large shim, but it's only one shim, very easy to install. Once you put it in your lenses, you can then switch freely between any of the four negative strengths. Now, once again, this is for working at T1.8, in which is where you get the strongest look. And the focus scale is guaranteed to be accurate at T1.8. If you wanna work at other stops, well, focus, through such a strong filter can be a matter of taste, so I would suggest testing. If you want to optimize your filters for a different stop, we can give you instructions as to how to shim the lenses for any stop between, say, 1.8 and T4. I'd like to show you some images now that I captured recently using a mini LF at T1.8. And what we're going to look at is the native look of the Signature Prime and then the strongest positive and negative filters. And we're gonna break down the look so that we understand what's happening in the background, the foreground, and at the point of focus. And then once we see how all those act separately, we're going to bring them all together and look at the look as a whole. In this first image, we're looking at the native look of a signature lens. Now, we've spent as much time working on the out-of-focus portion of the image as we did on the in-focus portion, because bokeh, which is a word that describes the out-of-focus portion of the image, has a tremendous effect visually, emotionally, on everything that's captured through that lens. Now, the best way to figure out what's happening in terms of bokeh is to look at an out-of-focus highlight. There tends to be a misconception that bokeh applies 
only to the quality of an out-of-focus highlight, but that's not true. Bokeh is a complex interaction of a number of characteristics, and we can see most easily what's going on by looking at an out-of-focus highlight, but that is not what bokeh is. Bokeh affects everything in the image, highlight or shadow. We can look at the disks created by highlight sources in the frame, and see that signature primes are very well corrected for a number of aberrations, specifically spherical aberration. The highlights become these flat, even disks with a slightly soft edge, and the idea is that backgrounds blend very, very smoothly. The point of focus has a kind of clarity to it, and then we create separation by eliminating almost all hard edges in the background. So the background becomes, I describe it almost as slippery. There's nothing for my eye to really grab onto, and my attention is always gently directed back to the point of focus. But we can deconstruct this by adding some spherical aberration and create a very different look. In this image, which is reminiscent of a lot of what I would consider classic Hollywood portrait lenses, we have a lot more spherical aberration. And the effect of the positive filter is to create a new highlight quality that bleeds off in a much more gentle fashion. In the center of the frame, the highlights have a bright quality to the center and then they bleed off. So it's not an even disc, but there's a hot center with a, a gradual transition. And at the edges of the frame, we're seeing quite a lot of coma, which creates this kind of arrowhead shape where there's a bright tip that trails off and creates almost a swirling sensation. And that's a really interesting effect. Signature lenses natively capture a bit of this swirling. When wide open at T1.8, this is a native part of their look, but the positive filter really exaggerates it in an interesting way. We're gonna see more of that in a second. But now let's look at the negative look, which is very, very different. So the negative look does the opposite. Instead of a hot center that trails off, we now have hot edges with a dark center. This tends to emphasize textures and bring out textures in the image. In the previous two clips, I felt a greater sense of space because there is a stronger sense of separation between foreground and background. In this, I feel a compression of space because both the point of focus and the background have sharp elements to them. Now, even though the background is technically out of focus, there are a lot of very sharp textures in that background that add kind of a high energy feel, uh, maybe a grittiness to the image. And the swirling is now gone because if you look at the edges of the frame, the coma is now heading in the opposite direction. So the arrowheads that were pointing outward in the previous clip are now pointing inward, which kind of eliminates the swirling effect. So this is a very, very different feel. Keep in mind these highlights are only the easiest way of seeing what's happening in terms of bokeh, we're now going to remove most of the highlights and look at these same characteristics in a daytime shot. This, once again, is the native look of a signature lens. At the point of focus, the subjects are very clear. They look very natural. Uh, I heard one DP say this is like looking through a beautiful window. But at the same time, there's a lot of separation with the background because the background is very, very soft due to the exceptionally well-corrected spherical aberration. In this frame, we can see the effect of the positive filter very strongly in the textures at the edges of the frame. That swirling sensation that I called out earlier is greatly enhanced. And it feels almost like it's embracing the characters in the center of the frame, you know, framing them within the frame. There are some highlights in the top left portion of the frame that look very similar to what we saw in that night scene. You can see that arrowhead shape with the hot tip and pointing out towards the edge of the frame. So I think it's easy to see that bokeh is not just about point sources. It fundamentally changes the background. With the negative filter, we can see a dramatic impact on the textures at the edges of the frame. They're much sharper and contrastier, and yet at the same time, there's a lot going on. There's perhaps some double images happening. It's clear that the image is out of focus, but there's a lot of activity and a lot of energy back there. And this frame almost feels menacing in a way. It feels like the foreground is actually coming forward. Maybe there's less of a sensation of depth. And the swirling pattern is completely gone. 
So whereas I would think of the previous image as perhaps a glamorous look, this is very much, once again, kind of a gritty, coarse look. Signature lenses are very special in that they are very well corrected for spherical aberration and they roll beautifully and equally out of focus in both directions. So you won't see any difference really between the quality of the out of focus image in the background or in the foreground. This is not how old lenses work. And we've talked about two different kinds of bokeh, the hot center bokeh and the donut bokeh. It's important to recognize that these always travel together. Now in this image, we're seeing quite a lot of the hot center background creating the swirling effect that we've looked at previously. But we see the gentleman in the foreground is now slightly sharper. That's because the donut bokeh is taking effect from the point of focus forward. So from her face forward towards the camera, we're actually seeing donut bokeh creating this kind of hard edge around objects that makes them appear like they're more in focus. Now, if we go to the negative filter, we can flip that. So now, from the point of focus backwards, we see a sharpening effect. But from her face forwards, things get softer. And we can see that this gentleman is considerably softer in this clip than he was in the previous clip. This is something that can be used creatively. For example, we could use this to communicate the relationship between these two characters, either by making the gentleman in the foreground look sharper or make him look softer. We can blend the woman into the background by making the background sharper in terms of texture, such that she and the background merge more. What's really interesting is that you can shift the apparent depth of field forward or backwards depending on which filter you're using. And that opens up a tremendous number of creative possibilities. This is the natural look of a signature lens, and it's a very realistic look. It captures all the detail and resolution that an Alexa 35 can handle, but at the same time, it's flattering to faces. But if we want to recreate a vintage look, we need to add some aberrations back in. The positive filter converts this signature lens into a kind of classic Hollywood portraiture lens. She looks very soft and her skin is just glowing. This feels to me like an image from a 1950s Hollywood film. And this combines the attributes that we've talked about so far. The background is extremely soft. He is a little sharper, but if we switch to the negative lens, we now see the background is a little bit sharper and he's a little bit softer. She no longer has that glow anymore. You may notice that the field of view changes a bit as we swap between filters. This is normal because at their core, these filters do incorporate the effects of a diopter, which includes magnification. So you'll see a variation of plus or minus 8%. There's also a slight exposure change, which is about plus or minus a quarter stop, which is barely noticeable and very easy to fix in post. And now let's watch some video clips that show all of the unlimited looks that are possible with a single set of signature lenses. And thanks for watching.